Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included. In today's episode I have prepared something wonderful that I always wanted to try out but never really tackled. And that is a methane distillery or natural gas generator. I already took myself the liberty of preparing a little area right here. Actually, it's a huge area, but I think we're gonna need the space. At the moment, I'm pumping out all of the gases since I want to achieve a vacuum so we can get started with that. If you have never heard of a natural gas generator, what you basically want to do is you take oil, then you boil it to the point of it becoming petroleum. We are already doing that here with our petroleum generator. However, if you heat it up even more, you can get sour gas. The sour gas can then be cooled down into liquid methane and that can be heated up into natural gas. And this process is going to give us a huge amount of natural gas that we can use in order to produce more energy. The problem at the moment about my natural gas is it is not really consistent. Well, at the moment, both of my geysers are basically running. So we have plenty of natural gas, but every now and then I'm running out. Every now and then I'm producing too much. This is also why I daisy chained a couple of gas reservoirs here at the bottom. But the goal today is basically going to be to get as much natural gas as possible and at the same time use up all the extra oil that we are producing at the moment. Just to clarify what I prepared right here, this is going to be our distillery and on the left side right here we are going to store the natural gas. So probably not in the entirety of the room, it can be stored just in a little portion of it. But essentially those are the two rooms we require. Since we are done pumping out all of the gases, let me just go ahead and get rid of that. We're also gonna take apart the unnecessary power wires. I'm not gonna need that. I think I'm gonna need a little bit of power here on the top. So that should be working out nicely. In order to make this contraption somewhat efficient, I've already started crafting some more super coolant. We're gonna need uh, plenty of it. Well, not too much, but a little bit. Which means I'm soon gonna be out of fullerene and we need to focus on getting more fullerene with the space missions. But I think I should have enough for this contraption. The first thing I want to prepare is a little area for super coolant to be and actually give the chill that is required in order to distill the methane. And we are gonna do that with just four steel tiles. Actually, before I do that, I wanna make sure that I uh, pick everything up. Can you please hurry up with that? So four of these tiles are gonna be metal steel tiles and then we are gonna close off this room and I wanna fill up each of these tiles with 100 kilograms of super coolant. So this is going to be the part of the contraption that converts the sour gas into methane. On the very top, I want to free up a little bit of space. This is where we are going to build our aqua tuners. Now, I want to build them out of thermium, actually, since that has an incredible overheat temperature. That is actually something I forgot, but look at that. We have plenty of crafts that we can do. I'm going to need 1200 kilograms per aqua tuner, and I want at least two aqua tuners. I already have 400 kilograms, so 20 crafts should be... Can I not do... Oh no, I need more tungsten. Well, that's actually easy. We can just smelt some up right there. Wolframite to tungsten shouldn't be an issue. Let's uh, do about... Yeah, let's do 50 crafts. Why not? We can use it in the future as well. However, we can already go ahead and prepare the aqua tuner room. We are gonna have a door right here and another door right there. So the three middle tasks we can fill up. So on the top right here, this is gonna be our heat source and we're gonna heat it up using our thermal aqua tuners. And in order to transfer the heat, I'm just gonna use some steel tasks like so. And hold the phone. Before we actually do that, I still need access to the room. So let's try to build these aqua tuners as soon as possible. I'm gonna place them right on top of the metal tiles. It's actually not really necessary, but symmetry and everything. The steam room right here, I'm gonna attempt to keep at around 1000 degrees. That should be fine. So in order to accomplish that and not overheat the aqua tuners, we are gonna uh, take a thermo... There we go. Thermo sensor. And I think that can be just iron. And we're gonna place it right there. We're also gonna take some automation wire and hook it up to both of the aqua tuners. Last but not least, we are gonna take some insulated pipes, igneous rock, and we are gonna go into the aqua tuner, out of the aqua tuner, back into the second aqua tuner, and this is where we wanna go ahead and loop things around. Now, that is gonna be a slight issue here with the piping. This is actually my oil source here on the top. I already installed a shutoff so I can control how much oil I'm pumping in. Now really looking at this, I think what I should do is have that shutoff right here instead. So we are gonna take that shutoff, place it over here. 
And instead, we're going to be leading the oil down the other side. So I'm not going to need any of this. That should be fine. And we are going to continue the aqua tuner loop, which is going to go all the way down here. And it's going to be cooling down my super coolant area. So it's going to wiggle through these tiles with radiant pipes. And right here is where we are going to come out and all the way loop back into the aqua tuner. Now, the cool thing about super coolant is that it, it cannot freeze. Well, actually, it can freeze, but you cannot achieve that with an aqua tuner. So we're not even going to need a sensor for this part. Let's go ahead, grab a couple of radiant pipes. I'm actually going to go with steel in this case. And we are going to wiggle, as I said, right there in order to cool this area down. Eventually, I guess we want to bring over our super coolant. I'm going to dump two loads of 200 kilograms in there. So we have 100 kilograms in each of the tiles. I'm also going to fill up this area right here with uh, two rows of tiles. Liquid, super coolant right there, enable auto bottle and let's go. Oh, hold on. Actually thinking about this, we should make this loop much shorter by using lots and lots of bridges. So I don't have to completely fill it up and therefore can save on super coolant. I think that is a brilliant idea. So we're going to delete this again. Same thing here on the other side. And instead, what we want to do is just set up a whole bunch of bridges. And therefore, we kind of save on super coolant, if you get my drift. There we go. Said and done. It's still the same loop, but we don't have to fill as much of the liquid. We actually already received the first load of super coolant. Just one more, and then we are going to close this off. Please, somebody pick up that stuff here. Thank you, Hassan. You're the only reasonable person here gonna take some heavy watt conductive wire and we need to be careful about this do i have to make this out of steel i think iron should be enough right but let's just be sure melting point is 1500 degrees so that's perfect because as soon as we are above 1000 degrees that's when i want to stop the aqua tuners wait oh i think my rocket is returning that is actually the perfect timing because i need more fullerene potentially and i need to send that rocket beautiful that's what i'm talking about thank you for coming back okay i had to briefly tend to a couple of other issues and in the meantime i totally forgot about this project which means we now have way more super coolant in here than i first wanted but i should still have enough in order to at least try to fill up the loop otherwise we will have to take some of that here as well but you can see we are still delivering a little bit of super coolant so why don't we go ahead and actually pick that up with a liquid pump uh let me see it don't want to build this out of steel and they're going to fill up the loop using a bridge so it gets completely full. We are also going to need a little bit of power that I'm going to introduce right there. I'm still in need of an awful lot of materials. The crafting actually goes uh, rather slowly at the moment. I guess in the meantime, we can already go ahead and set up a mechanized door that is going to go right there and here. And we are going to control these doors using a hydro sensor made out of iron that we're going to place right there. I want to take some automation wire and hook up both of these doors. Now, I think, yeah, iron should be enough if we do this correctly. And then, of course, we're going to have another set of steel tiles in order to transfer the heat in case the doors are closed. The hydro sensor we can set to something really low. Let's say uh, we want to close the doors as soon as we are above one kilogram. So I want to send a green signal if we are below one kilogram, but a red signal if we are above one kilogram, which essentially just means if we bring up the oil, if it is still liquid, then those doors are going to activate and transfer the heat in order to convert it into gas. Maybe let's already think about how we want to get the oil in there. The oil at the moment is going to be coming down here and I want to bring this fairly low. Let me actually think. We might first want to set up this area here. So uh, let's imagine we have some sour gas right here. At this point, we want to convert it into methane. We are going to grab a liquid pump in order to pick it up and we're going to place the pump right here. This can be made out of iron because at this point it's going to be fairly low temperatures. I then want to kind of close off this area. The problem is sometimes the conversion is going to happen really quickly and then we are going to end up with some natural gas. However, if we keep the natural gas low enough and trapped in this area, we are going to be able to convert it back to methane should this happen. So I guess this bottle emptier is a little bit in the way. We're going to move it over. We also want to make sure we have the power. Eventually, I'm going to lead it over here. And actually, right at this point, we're going to have a joint plate. That should be fine. I'm going to make the joint plate out of iso resin. 
The liquid methane I'm gonna transport over using insulated pipes and we're gonna go into that direction. This is eventually gonna disappear as soon as we have filled up the loop with coolant and we wanna bring the methane over in order to start wiggling it up the room and actually transfer some heat or chill in this case. In order to do this right, we're gonna bring it all the way over here using insulated pipes. I don't want to start with the radiant pipes too quickly and right at this point we're gonna have our liquid valve in order to limit how much methane can flow through. We are also gonna build this out of iron though. This could be a problem. Yeah, let's just do it out of steel. We should have enough steel in order to be able to afford that. In the beginning we're gonna have a little bit of an issue because uh, the system kind of needs to get going and I don't want to risk too much. So methane is going to go into the liquid valve that we're going to set to one kilogram because one kilogram, even if it reaches the temperature to be converted back into gas, is not going to allow it to do that in the pipes themselves. So only if we have over one kilogram, we are capable of breaking the pipes. Otherwise, it's just going to stay nice and safe in the pipe. We are going to continue with two more insulated blocks and then we are going to switch to radiant pipes. And for that I'm actually going to use copper pipes. Those should be more than enough. And basically at this point we can start wiggling. Now I want to leave a little bit of space free. Actually as a matter of fact we need to bring over the oil. So maybe this would be the spot to do it. And we are just going to go up one more block and then we start to wiggle. So that means I can take my oil line, bring it over here and bring it over there. This should go away. Gonna bridge that over. Oil is coming in at this point. Uh, let me go ahead and get rid of a couple of things. Like the ladders here I don't need, but I need a way to get up there conveniently. Hmm. Building this is a little bit of a pain in the butt. Anyways, let's go ahead and build another liquid valve out of steel. And I'm gonna place that right here for the oil. After that we wanna do two pipes of insulated pipes. There we go. And the rest should be, I guess, radiant pipes. But let's first continue with the methane loop. Mm, I really wonder. I think this is not necessary here anymore. I mean, the methane only needs to heat up a little bit in order to be converted back into natural gas. So this should already be enough. We are then gonna move over and bridge over in order to move into the natural gas holding chamber. And right here at this point we want to use a liquid vent in order to release it and it should immediately be converted into natural gas as it leaves the vent. Next up we're going to do the same thing for the oil. It's coming in at a certain temperature and as it moves up the room we are already going to preheat the oil a little bit. Um, let me actually do it at this point and then we are just going to wiggle it up. And we're going to do that all the way to the top and actually end up maybe here in the corner. That should be fine, shouldn't it? Yeah. Liquid vent there. And since we're only running one kilograms of oil packets, we should have no issues whatsoever heating this up. Let's actually not forget about this. 1000 grams and we can probably copy the setting and use it for this one as well. Now I have to admit I didn't think about how to get water into this room. Of course we need to dump about 200 kilograms of water into our steam room. So I will have to think about that. I guess we're gonna go the easy route and just lead some water over here. That shouldn't be an issue. Then once we close off this room we can dump some water using this vent. Okay, so that's gonna be kind of a temporary thing. And we're gonna bring the water all the way from over here. Should be fine. So I think what I'm gonna do is just count 20 packets and then at this point we wanna divide it. So I have exactly 20 packets that will be going into my steam room. Alrighty, it is a couple of cycles later. I took myself the liberty as I was waiting for the thermium to actually fill up the entirety of this with a drywall layer. I also added two temp shift plates right here and I added three temp shift plates right there. Once that bad boy is built, we should be able to close off this room and actually start filling it up with the water we prepared. The next important step is going to be to fill up this row with airflow tiles so that the oil can actually rest on top of it and wait for the conversion into gas. And once it became gas, it of course can go through the airflow tiles and fill up the room. Beautiful. Said and done. Let's go ahead and hook this up right away. The packet should tag along and then we can even uh, take apart the pipe that is left over. There it is. We have all the water in the joint. What we can do now is activate the system so the water gets converted into steam. We heat up this room and prime the system this way. At the same time the super coolant here at the bottom is gonna be cooled all the way down to minus 270 or so degrees. 
and that essentially means we can also close off this room. Now, the way I'm going to do this is with a joint plate, but I'm not going to waste insulation materials for this. So we are just going to take igneous rock right there. It could also be a normal joint plate. And then the bottom one, I want to fill up with an airflow tile as well. This is going to prevent the methane from actually spilling out. And it's also going to block the airflow. So in case we still get some natural gas, the natural gas is going to tend to go up and it's going to be trapped here. And once we cool down this room enough, it's going to be converted back into methane so we can pick it up with the pump. Naturally, the methane is going to continue into this direction and it's going to be distributed in this pipe in packets of one kilograms or less and it's gonna be heated up enough in order to be converted into natural gas hopefully in the meantime we finish the system here there's just one more thing that is missing i already prepared the iron wire for this i want to set up another sensor right here namely a atmo sensor that is gonna go right there and it's gonna check if we already have enough sour gas in the joint i want to stop the flow of oil so this is just going up to the liquid shutoff that I have for my oil main input. It's uh, of course still going to use the entirety of the oil we will have in these pipes. But you know I can set this to 10 kilograms and then we are going to stop the flow. Just in case I cannot convert the sour gas quickly enough. I don't want the sour gas to accumulate to infinity. Let's also wrap up this row of airflow tiles. Should be fine. I'm not going to connect this just yet. I I'm going to connect this once the system has been primed. Uh, talking about that, we need to reconnect this loop. I already filled it up completely with the coolant. And now we can just let it flow through and let it do its thing. And there we go. We can see the coolant loop is practically full. There's just like one packet that isn't completely full. This one here. But that is fine. In the meantime, we should be converting this to steam. It actually already happened. And as soon as we reach the 1000 degrees mark, it's going to stop the aqua tuners. That means we should now also be able to take apart my ladder system here. Hopefully just in the nick of time. Yeah, there we go. Ellie, that was very elegant. Let's go ahead and pick up everything so we can actually wrap up this room and close it off. We're not going to be able to get back into this room, so hopefully we didn't forget anything. Are we done? Are we really done? Man, this took me once again much longer than I anticipated, but I think we can get things started. No, I'm going to wait for the super coolant to cool down and I'm going to wait for the temperature to go up here. We need to have this at least 600 degrees or more in order to be efficient enough for the first batch of oil. Also, this Atmo sensor, I'm going to set this to 10 kilograms, so 10,000 grams. And once that has been reached, we want to shut off the shut off. So as long as it is below the 10 kilograms mark, I'm fine. That means we can now go ahead and just uh, close off this room. Should be no problem. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. We have minus 63 degrees right there. And on the top, we have 483 degrees. There we go. We have reached the 600 degrees mark. So let's go ahead and activate the oil line. I think all I have to do for that to happen is connect this. Yeah. Ooh. okay. We got one. Pa well, it's not that bad because it's still a vacuum. But now we should only get packets of 1000 grams. The oil has made its way all the way up there. And as soon as this hydro sensor registers that there is a liquid, we are going to close these doors and transfer the heat so we can actually heat this up. It should also heat up fairly quickly. Of course, in the beginning, we might lose a little bit of heat, but, uh, you know, eventually it's gonna even itself out and we shouldn't run into too many problems. Ah, there we go. We are just about to convert the crude oil into petroleum, so not much to go until it's converted into sour gas as well. And that's what I'm talking about. We have sour gas at a temperature of 420 degrees. It's now going to fill up this room. And as you can see, it's touching these plates, hopefully being converted into methane very quickly. In order for that to happen, we have to reach a temperature of about minus 160 degrees. Actually, we could go ahead and check on that. Sour gas minus 161.5. So that conversion should happen any time. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, of course, sulfur. That is a side product that is happening in that conversion. That freaked me out a little bit. Now, mm, yeah, in the beginning, since we don't have a lot of pressure in here, this natural gas piece might make its way out. Yeah, that's what I was... Ah, no. <laughs> Hopefully uh, that is not going to be an issue in the long run. There we go. We can see we got some methane going on, which means this pump should turn on and therefore we should have the methane going through here. It's going to be limited to 1000 grams. 
and as it makes its way up there, it's actually heating itself up to a nice temperature. At the moment, it is 70 degrees. That is fine. And right here, it's now being dumped and converted directly back into natural gas. There we go. We have natural gas. Absolutely amazing. Now, if we are lucky, we are not gonna... Yeah, look at that. The natural gas actually got deleted because it wasn't enough. And you can see we are accumulating here a little bit, but as it cools down using the temp shift plates, we are getting more and more methane. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Come on, give me a little more sour gas. Give me just a tad more. I want to see this uh, happen. Uh, okay, I see. So we have a little bit of a problem uh, in the beginning. It's only the beginning phase. You know, I just need a little more sour gas. Actually, let me stop this at 15,000 grams. Once we get a little bit of a higher pressure in here, we shouldn't uh, cool down the methane as much so that it actually solidifies. Because right now that is actually what is happening. It solidifies because we are, uh, you know, too cold at the moment. Okay, so looking at this, I think the temp shift plates were uh, too much. I shouldn't have placed those down. Uh, can I conveniently get in there? Not, <laughs> not really. <laughs> I might actually load up a safe game and redo this part, though that's gonna cost me a lot of time. Okay, I attempted to reload the safe gain. I'm just gonna be completely straight with you. I cheated these uh, temp shift plates out of the way and replaced them with drywalls. Uh, this way I lost a couple of diamonds, so I'm punished enough, but it would have taken me, uh, no kidding, about 20 minutes longer to go back in there and do it, I realized once I reloaded the save game. So we are basically at the same stage as before. However, without the temp shift plates, we are now not getting as much of the methane. Just in the beginning, I got the solidified methane, but you can see now we are getting a much more of the liquid as well, which is then going to be transported over. Now, I still have to wait a little bit for the sour gas to accumulate. I want to make sure that we get at least 10 kilograms or so in the joint in order to make this more efficient. But there we go. We finally have our natural gas generator. I also added a gas pump right here in order to pump out all of the natural gas and feed it to my generators. I'm now going to observe this for a little bit, but if everything goes right, then eventually we're not going to have as much solidified methane and we can utilize most of it for the conversion. On the top here, we still have a very high temperature. This seems to be working out phenomenally. Okay, I'm gonna observe this for a little bit and then re-evaluate in the next episode if we still have to change something else. But with that out of the way, I would say we can wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching, have a great time, and see you soon. Bye-bye.